today's video I'm going to go over some helpful tips and some more advanced things to get the most FPS out of Escape from Tarkov. I've done a few of these before and you guys seem to really find them helpful, so if this is just the same, let me know by leaving a thumbs up down below and a comment as well, it really helps me out. But as you can see, on Lighthouse in a live raid, with no optimization at all, cranked up to ultra, my system is getting 80 FPS. As I aim down sights, it drops down to 5960 FPS. Not great, but everything is cranked up with no optimizations. At the end of this video, we're going to be pushing 145 FPS, no problem, on this map. And this map is extremely hard to run. It's not optimized at all. So this is hopefully going to help you guys out and you'll still have the game looking good as well. So let's get straight into it, talk about the graphics settings in game first of all. So first things first, let's talk about our in-game settings and what I use to get the most FPS out of it without sacrificing too much on visual fidelity. So if you go down to settings, in the game tab you'll see some few tick boxes down here. You want to turn on automatic RAM cleaner if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM or less. This will stop temporary files bogging down your system while you're playing. And as soon as your RAM reaches a certain amount of usage, it will just clear out all of the Tarkov temporary files that it don't need anymore. And it will smooth up your performance in game. If you have a large amount of RAM in your system, then you probably don't need this turned on. But having this turned on doesn't actually affect your performance too much. So it's worth just ticking this on just in case because if your system does get bogged down that's when you'll start seeing a performance decrease and then underneath that I've got only use physical cores enabled if you've got a hyper threading and multi threading CPU try this on first because it is a use case scenario sort of situation it may work it may not but this is actually a really good thing in your system you've got logical and physical cores and they are combined within your CPU mixing the two is never usually good it'll cause your system to underperform so if you've got a hyper threading and multi threading system then you're going to want physical cores ticked if you don't then you've probably got about a chance to upgrade your system because a lot of cpus nowadays are multi threading and hyper threading moving over a tab to graphics you're just going to want to copy this basically set your screen resolution to its native resolution set your screen mode to full screen to avoid input latency and then set your overall graphics quality to low and then change the few settings that you're going to need to. So texture quality is going to be set to high. Shadow quality is going to be set to low. Object LOD quality is set to 2.5, but you can set this down to 2 if you need to. You may notice a little bit of pop in though every now and then. So I leave it at 2.5. My overall visibility is set to 1000. Any lower than this, you won't see things rendering properly. Any higher than this and... With the map sizes that we've currently got, it's just a waste of time and you're sacrificing performance for that. Anti-aliasing is set to TAA. This is actually a really good anti-aliasing option to not have much of an impact on FPS, but still get those nice smooth, less jagged edges. And then we've got resampling set to off, HBAO set to off, SSR, that's water reflection set to off as well. Anisotropic filtering is off and NVIDIA low latency is set to on. If you have a slightly more powerful system, you can set this to on and boost, but it will decrease your performance a little bit more. To give myself a little bit of sharpness in game, I have set my sharpness to 0.6 and the lobby FPS limit and game FPS limit are cranked all the way up as they can be. All of the tick boxes are set off as well. They don't look very good anyway, but they do decrease your performance as well. Moving over once again to post FX. Now usually I will have this on, but for the sake of this video and to get the most performance out of the system, you're gonna to wanna to turn this off. It does decrease your performance a little bit, but if you feel like you need it to get a little bit more color in the game, then you're gonna be sacrificing five or 10 FPS by doing so. So if you want the most FPS possible, leave it off. But if you want a little bit more color and visual fidelity, turn it on and see what you can do. Now I've shown you those settings inside of Escape from Tarkov, we can go outside of that and improve our FPS even more. Now those settings that I showed you were really good for just getting the most out of your game, but if you want to go a little bit further, then here's what you can do. Starting off with your NVIDIA control panel, if you're not a NVIDIA user for graphics cards, just skip to the next chapter, and if you are, pay close attention because some of these control panel settings can really change the way your game runs. 
so I'll go over it as easy as I can to get you through it and you can change your settings accordingly. So to get to your NVIDIA control panel, you can right click on the desktop, go show more options and click NVIDIA control panel, or you can click on the up arrow on your taskbar, right click on the NVIDIA icon and then go to NVIDIA control panel that way. Down the side, you should see manage 3D settings and in here you'll see two options, global settings, which will change every application on your computer. And then you've got program settings, which will change settings for individual applications. So that's what we're going to want to go under program settings and then you'll see a drop down and you should see escape from Tarkov.exe in there. If you don't, then you need to add it. So just click add and then you'll have a list of even more applications. And if you don't see escape from Tarkov.exe in here, then you're going to need to go to browse and find it. Now, all you need to do is go to the file path where Escape from Tarkov is installed and find the EXE application. But if you don't know where that is, then you can just go to the Battlestate Games launcher. And then once that loads up, click the drop down arrow next to your name and click settings. From here, scroll down to you see game directory and you'll see the file path where Escape from Tarkov is installed. So you can just navigate to that and then find the EXE application. Just click into that and you will add it to your list. Now we can finally change some settings for our application. Now, as you can see, all of the ones in bold are the ones that I've changed, which are quite a lot. I'm not going to be going over every single setting and what they do in detail because it'll make this video like two hours long. Instead, we have a description of each setting and typical usage scenarios that NVIDIA give you. These are really helpful. So if you don't understand based on what each of these are after reading that, just comment down below and I'll assist you further but a lot of these are self-explanatory anyway. I'll start off with anisotropic filtering that is set to application controlled because we are setting it inside of Escape from Tarkov ourselves. Anti-aliasing FXAA is set to off and gamma correction is also set to off as well. Now gamma correction can improve how 3D images look, so the lighting on 3D images mainly and how bright and dark things are, but it doesn't make a lot of difference in Tarkov so We'll set that to off and save ourselves some FPS. Anti-aliasing mode is set to application controlled because we are setting it to TAA in Escape from Tarkov. So we don't want the actual NVIDIA control panel affecting our decision inside of the game settings. And then if we go down to anti-aliasing transparency, we set that to multi-sample. Now you'll mainly notice a difference on multi-sampling and super sampling on water and glass textures. But again, inside a NVIDIA control panel, it don't make a lot of difference. So to get more performance, we set ourselves multi-sampling as well. The next setting down is background application max frame rate that is set to off. But basically what this does is if you tab out your game, you can set a max frame rate. So it isn't just constantly running at high performance in the background while you're not even tabbed into the game. But that being said, as you tab back in, your FPS is going to fluctuate quite a bit for a couple of seconds until you get back to a stable frame rate from doing this. So I leave this off, but it is up to you. You can set a frame rate limit if you want from here. Next is CUDA GPUs. I only have one GPU in my system, so I've got that set, in which case it will say all. But if you have multiple GPUs in your system, you're going to want to make sure you select the highest performing one. After that, I've got low latency mode set to ultra, and this is because I have a G-Sync monitor. If you don't, then just set this to on. So if you have a free sync monitor, just set it to on. But if you have a G-Sync monitor, make sure you set this to ultra. Then my max frame rate is my monitor's maximum frame rate that it can go. Now, a lot of people have high refresh rate monitors now, so make sure you set it to the highest refresh rate that it can do. And if you have a 60 hertz monitor, for example, just keep this off. But any higher than this, you'll see some screen tearing and a little bit of stuttering as well. For the smoothest experience, make sure you set it to your actual monitor's frame rate. Don't go any higher. And then again, monitor technology. If you have a G-Sync monitor, set that to G-Sync. If you don't, set it to fixed refresh. Multi-frame sampling is just set to off and open GPU rendering is set to your NVIDIA graphics card that you're using. Next is power management mode. Now I've got this set to prefer maximum performance, which means that the graphics card isn't revving up and down depending on what it's doing. It's going to stay at a constant level to give you maximum performance. Now this will heat up your system a little bit. So if your system's already struggling with pushing out like really hot air, then just bear that in mind. But this does actually improve your performance quite a bit. And 
it's always worth doing but if you find that it is struggling then you can always set this back my preferred refresh rate is always going to be highest available texture filtering for anisotropic sample optimization that is set to on for better performance and then negative LOD bias is set to allow for high performance as well. Texture filtering for quality is set to high performance. Now you can set this to quality if you've got a good system, but if you do just want to get the most FPS possible, set this to high performance. Now we've got texture filtering trilinear optimization that's set to on again for better performance. This doesn't actually affect what your game looks like at all. So just keep this on. Threaded optimization is set to off. Triple buffering is set to off as well and vertical sync I have this set off as well. So once you've done that, click apply and that is all of your settings that you need to change in here. Now of course, if you do have a G-Sync monitor, make sure you've got that set up. So go down to set up G-Sync and you've selected the G-Sync capable monitor, click in that and then click enable for windowed and full screen modes. So make sure that's ticked. After that, you're good to go, your monitor's set up and you have enabled G-Sync and you've got all the settings changed for Escape from Tarkov that you need to. Now a lot of the time the thing that is going to be impacting your performance while you're playing games is just having other applications open that are just running in the background that you don't need. Now of course you can close these down individually but a lot of these applications are actually just applications that are running in the background on startup. To check this you can just press Control shift escape at the same time that will bring up your task manager and you can see you've got the applications that are running and then all of the background applications as well and there will be a lot of them so to check what ones that you don't need running on startup and what is actually opening automatically when you boot your computer just go to the startup tab at the top and you can see all of them listed here you'll see how long it takes you to post and get logged in usually and you'll see your startup impact as well just how much of an impact each application runs on your pc as it opens up while it's booting so just scroll through this list and if you don't need it just right click and disable and these things will not open on startup anymore simple as that so for the bsg launcher do you really need it opening by itself i probably don't so disable it and there you go that's a high startup impact application just taken off so that's a nice little thing to do and of course if you do find that you need it after all then of course you can change that and just re-enable it and while I'm here, I might as well mention that all of these applications that you don't actually need anymore, just uh, make sure you delete them every now and then. Just go into your control panel, uninstall programs that you aren't needing, it'll free up some space on your hard disk, and if they're running in the background, it'll stop that from happening. So just make sure you're cleaning up your computer every once in a while. Speaking of cleanup, you can actually do that for your temporary files as well. You've probably heard this before, going through your temporary files and wiping them all out every now and then is a good thing to do. But what you should be doing is just automating that process because you can forget, I forget too. So what's a great thing to do is press the start button and type storage and then go into storage settings. You'll see your hard drive broken down into different things and what's being used up and what's not. But under that you'll see storage management and storage sense. Make sure this is set to on. And if you go in here, it basically runs a user content cleanup. So it cleans up a few things as you can see it's cleaned up three gigs of space in the past month just by cleaning things out every week so i run it every week but you can set this to every month or just if your disk space is running low and it will clean out everything in my recycling bin that's been there for over 30 days because once it's in my recycling bin it's forgotten about and of course if you want to i use my downloads for a few different things but if you want to get rid of your downloads folder as well every so often you can set that as well but this is actually a really cool tool to just clear up things that you're not using and then if you go back one to the storage breakdown you can click temporary files in here and then just make sure that you remove everything in here that you're not using now every time you do a windows update windows cleanup files will appear here and they will stack up you'll get a few gigs stacked up pretty easily because once it updates to a new windows version the old windows version will still be on your pc and just scattered about randomly in the background so if you make sure you tick all the things you don't want in temporary files you can remove them every so often and just clean up your pc spruce it up a little bit and it'll be running nicely for you
The next thing you're going to want to do is change some things in your systems registry. If you've never done this before, it can seem quite daunting, but just follow along and listen carefully and you'll be absolutely fine, I promise you. So what you're going to want to do is hold the Windows key on your keyboard, press R to bring up your run console, and then type in R-E-G-E-D-I-T. That will be reg edit, click OK, and it will bring up your registry editor as an admin. Click yes on that, and you'll be inside your systems registry. What you're going to want to do is click expand on H key local machine, as you can see here, and then you can expand the software folder. And then you'll have a large list. Scroll down until you see Microsoft and expand Microsoft. And then you have a huge list of different folders. Scroll all the way down. Things are in alphabetical order to make things a little bit easier for you. But scroll down to the W's and you'll see Windows NT. Expand that folder. And then just underneath that, expand current version. And then you can go down to where it says multimedia. And once you see multimedia, expand that and then you'll see the folder system profile. Don't expand this one, but instead click into it and you'll see a few registry values in here. The first one you're gonna to wanna to change is network throttling index. You can double click on this, make sure hexadecimal is ticked. And in here, you're gonna to wanna to change whatever value was in here previously to eight Fs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once you've done that, click okay. If you're unsure on whether that was right, as long as your data value is 0x FFFFFFF, you'll be fine. And then from here, just go to system responsiveness, double click in that. And again, make sure hexadecimal is ticked and change whatever value was in here to zero. Click OK, and then you can expand the system profile folder. Once you've done that, expand tasks, and you'll see a games folder in here. Click into that, and you've got a few things that you can change in here too. The first thing being GPU priority. Double click into here, and again, hexadecimal needs to be ticked here. Once you've done that, change whatever value that was in here originally to eight. Click OK, and then underneath GPU priority, you'll see priority, double click into that, and make sure hexadecimal is selected again, and change whatever value was in here to six. Underneath priority, you'll see scheduling category. Now this is not a D word, so if you open this up, you're actually editing a string of data. In here, it would have probably said medium to begin with, but what you're gonna wanna do is change it to high, but you're gonna have to make sure the first letter of this word is a capital, so capital H, lowercase i, g, h, and then just click OK. After that, you are completely done. This is all you need to change in the registry to get a little bit more performance out of your system while gaming. If you notice that some of these registry entries are not in here, for example, GPU priority, just right click in the games folder, go new, and then go new D word 32 bit value, click into that, name it GPU space priority, then double click into here and then change the value. And the same with scheduling category, just make sure that you have a new string value and then edit that string value for high and name it scheduling category. Now we're gonna be changing our computer's power plan. Now, a lot of people don't do this if they've got a desktop PC, but they really, really should. So what you're gonna to wanna to do first is just go onto the start button, type control panel. Once you're in control panel, just set view by to small icons to make it a little bit easier for you. And then you'll find power options in here. Click into that and you'll see that you've got a few different power plans that you can pick from. Now, mine is set to high performance, but you'll notice that you should have a few different options. There should be balanced power saver and high performance by default, but you can actually go a little bit further than this and add ultimate performance, but you can't do this very simply. So what you need to do is press the start button again, type CMD for your command prompt, right click on that and then go run as admin. Once you've done that, you're gonna wanna paste this from the description into your CMD. So power config, duplicate scheme, and then all of this numbers and letters. Click enter and you'll see your power scheme ultimate performance here has been entered. So you can close that down and just refresh your power options and you'll see a new option appear for ultimate performance. That is what you're gonna wanna tick. 
Now you've selected your ultimate performance plan, what you're going to want to do is change a few things just in case they're not set how they should be. So if you go into change plan settings, you can see turn off your display, you can set this to whatever you want, it'll make your screens go black but everything else will be running absolutely fine. I don't usually like it so I set it to an hour and then you've got put the computer to sleep, make sure that is set to never so your computer just doesn't shut off after it's been idle for a certain amount of time. Once you've done that, click change advanced power settings and once in here, you'll get a new window pop up. And then you at the top see hard disks and then turn off hard disk after. Make sure you've set this to zero. Zero means never, so it never turns off. And then after that, scroll down to where it says processor power management, expand that and then you'll see minimum and maximum processor state. Expand both of these and make sure they're both set to 100% to get the most out of your CPU. Now what you're going to want to do is press the start button and type in settings. Once you're in the settings app you can go down the side and see gaming and from here you can go into game bar, turn that stuff off. That's just going to avoid things popping up in your game and also it's not very good and decreases performance. From here, captures. This is basically Windows' version of Shadowplay but if you're trying to record your stuff I'd recommend using Shadowplay anyway so turn this off. And then finally you've got game mode, turn this on because it optimizes your PC entirely to turn things off in the background while you're playing games. So it actually works really well and has been getting improved constantly by Microsoft themselves. Once you've done all of that for your game settings you can go down to privacy and security and a lot of these things will be set by default to on and this will actually take up your system resources because they're constantly polling for this information. So what you can do is just go down to Windows permissions, just make sure you turn things off, just turn it all off. But of course, read things just in case you want things turned on, but I'd recommend just turning, turning it all off really, unless you really think that you're gonna need it in the future. So turn everything off and then once you've scrolled through from Windows permissions, you can see app permissions and a lot of these are like voice activation and stuff like that. Certain things you will need like your microphone, um, but like radios you ain't gonna really need on your computer and inbuilt messaging you won't either. It's just certain things like that. So scroll through your privacy and security, turn all of Windows permissions off pretty much, and then scroll through your app permissions and see which ones you're gonna need and which ones you're not. Now we've optimized quite a bit already, but you haven't actually thought to optimize your drives yet. You've got drives in your computer, whether it be an SSD or a HDD, and they aren't always running optimally. So what you're gonna wanna do is press the start button and start typing defragmentation, and you'll see defragment and optimized drives pops up as an application. Open that and you'll see whatever drives you've got listed in here. I've got my SSD, which is my Windows boot drive, and my HDD. What you're gonna wanna do is just click on each one, click optimize, and it will just cut through everything that isn't needed and optimize your drive to make sure they are running well. Now depending on how big your drives are, this can take a little while, but once it's done, it should say OK and you'll be good to go and your drive should be running as optimal as possible. Now one more thing for those that think we've just done something wrong there, defragmenting an SSD you should not do. What we did there was trim the SSD, that's absolutely fine, there are differences between them. Do not defrag an SSD, you can only do that to a HDD, but using the optimized drives function inside of the defrag and optimized drive app, it will only trim an SSD and it will defrag a HDD for you. So don't worry, what we did there was completely safe. And the last thing we're gonna change before we go ahead and see just how much FPS we have gained is something in our system settings once again. So press the start button, type in settings, and then scroll all the way down to about. This is your PC information right here. And then you'll see a button that says advanced system settings. Click that, a new window will pop up and it'll bring you to the advanced tab. And you'll see a category for performance. Click settings underneath that and you'll get performance options. Usually it'll be set to let Windows choose what's best for my computer, but if you want the best performance, tick the box that says adjust for the best performance. Now take a good look at what we have here at the moment. The window when I move it, moves around with it. But as soon as we do adjust best performance and then click apply, 
the window now no longer moves around when I move the window around. It's just a transparent box and it moves only when you let go of your click. If you don't like that, then you can tick some of the boxes on. For example, look at this text. It don't look very good. So I like the little smooth edges and screen fonts. And I like the show thumbnails instead of icons. And I like to show the window contents while dragging. And then once I've done that, I can click apply again and it will change the things back to how I like it. But the majority of these will still be off, giving me a lot better performance in game. This actually really does build up. All of these little animations that are running in the background really does build up. But that being said, let's go back into Escape from Tarkov and see just how well we have improved our FPS. And there you have it, live raid once again in Lighthouse. The FPS is massively improved. 100 plus all the time while walking around, pushing 140. Aiming down sights, you do get a dip because of the picture in picture thing and the way that the scopes are done, but it's dipping to what, 90, 80? And that's basically what we were getting at a maximum before we did any of this optimization. So the majority of the time you're easily having 110, 120, even 130, 40 FPS while walking about. If you're using a non-scoped optic like a reflex or ions then you won't even see the FPS drop when you ADS so it's really cool all of these little things do improve your gaming performance even not just Escape from Tarkov any game that you want to play and all of that is just little things that you might not even know to do so if this video did help you out like I said at the start I really do appreciate if you do hit that thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below that you love me because YouTube like that and I like making YouTube happy because they give me money anyway love you lots I'll see you in the next video have a great evening